Welcome back. My name is Jay with CompuMatter and also with ServerMatter. In this video, we're going to talk about installing themes into Guacamole. Uh, this has definitely eluded me. Even as the installation of Guacamole itself, I was having a hard time finding a very clear popcorn trail, and I have created a separate video for that, which you may want to have a look at. Um, when it came to themes, there was a lot of conflicting information out there, and the best use case scenario that I have found is using extensions. And uh, and even that, you know, I went to the Guacamole extension page, I took a hard look at what they had, and I really couldn't extract from that what I needed to to get the job done. So I enlisted the, the aid of ChatGPT, and combined, I got exactly the information I needed, along with uh, another GitHub page along the way, which we'll talk about. So let's get started and show you how to get a theme in your guacamole environment. Okay, so um, behind me is a wiki page. It's a page where we document the things that we learn so that we don't have to learn them a second time. And I'm going to use this as a walkthrough to uh, demonstrate to you how you would in install a theme. These are the files and folders um, that make up a theme. Now, you're going to be able to name yours anything you want. You can name this file anything you want. You can name your logos anything you want. Um, but they're going to have to be there to get a logo and some CSS included on your site. The translation page, right now we've only got one thing in there, and that's the title, which I'll demonstrate where that title exists. But that's the layout, and we're going to give you a zip file um, to download so that you'll have those as you move forward at your own pace. And on, on this wiki, we talk about what can you modify or rename, and it gives you a list of things you can name. Uh, there are pointers to these files within, say, the manifest MV or within the Quark manifest JSON. They have uh, pointers to the hard files that you see here and here. So you want to make sure, and, and here, so you want to make sure that anything you rename as a file you rename the pointers inside of them. Now I will say this one file, guac-manifest.json, absolutely has to be named exactly that and has to be at the root of your install as you see here, or it won't work. Now it describes this to you um, within the guac manifest file, things that you can rename. We'll talk about that. Now let's, let's assume you've got all that in place for the moment. The next step is creating the actual jar extension. And to do that, you're going to carry out this command. And just to kind of give you a little backdrop on that, the, uh, the flags CFMV, V just stands for verbose, so if there are some errors, we can see them. The rest of that, I'm going to let you look up online. Um, here we're giving what the name of the jar file is going to be, and, the, and that jar file is going. What we're going to be placing it. That's what this indicates. Uh, one directory back. We don't want it in the middle of our structure, so we're saying create it and stick it there. Um, we here we clearly state what files and what directories must be included in the jar file, and uh, and that's everything that you see here. We don't talk if it's re they're automatically recursive. So if it's grabbing the CSS, it's going to grab this. Images are going to grab these. We don't need to specify those. Only the parent items. Now there is one exception to these directory structures, and that is the use of this M flag has to do with me saying I want you to use our manifest file instead of uh, one that they may default include. So I'm saying that here, and then that's what this is. I'm manually stating where that meta manifest file exists. So that's why we have the directory being included here, as well as at the end there. This is to respond to a specific flag insertion right here. Now, after you've done that, it's going to end up creating this jar file. And at this point, you just need to move it where it belongs, and it belongs in the etc. guacamole extensions directory and in our case, servermatter-quark.jar. Restart Tomcat 
and your guac services in that order and your uh, new extension will be recognized. Now below I've created a bash script because I often make changes to the CSS and I want to test them. So you, you, you edit your CSS file, then you put this in a bash file, it's going to create the jar file. You can then copy the jar file back to the extensions folder, um, create the permissions on the extension folder, which I don't think I mentioned above. You need to make sure that uh, you've got Tomcat Tomcat as your uh, user group on etc. Guacamole extensions and uh, recursively. And, uh, and so this bash script will accomplish that every time you make a change very quickly. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the structure and the files themselves. What you see here, I've got opened in a Visual Studio code. You can see the tree structure that I showed you earlier. It's all under servermatter.guac. There's the CSS folder, the images folder, there's our logos, custom CSS. Again, you can rename these things. Uh, if we drill down into custom CSS, this is what we're looking at. You can see that's where I'm setting the body color, the uh, login, background colors. Uh, all of these things, let me just talk a little bit about that. So this is the login page for our guacamole. And if I open the console editor, okay, we can use that, uh, you know, the, your browser tools, whatever you may use. And I click the arrow and I hover over this item, I can then see that that is the login dialog notifications class. That's what it has to do with it. You can see the color I've painted it right here. I can then test that just to see if I've got the right item. I clearly do. Uh, so now I can grab that class, go to my CSS file, and I'm just going to search for it because I know it's on there somewhere. Uh, and there it is, and there's where I have in fact given it a border and given it a color, uh, a max width. I've increased it, made it a little wider than the default. So one at a time you can isolate the elements within guacamole um, and then you can come here and make the changes that need to be made. Now I'm logged in and one of the areas that were a little bit trickier were some of these with they have hover commands and you want to get out of the console but when you do the hover is gone. I'm using two-factor authentication, which is another subject on its own. Okay, so when we're in Chrome, if we open the developer console, which I can hit those three dots, more tools, uh, and choose developer tools. There we are. And I'm going to go ahead and line those up at the bottom of the page so we can have it down there. And I'm going to click on one of these. Let's say showroom. You see that bar across the that goes like that, that changes color as I'm going across. I want to isolate that, that hover motion, so I'm going to right click on that. And I think it's here, and you see where it says force state and I say hover? By doing that, it shows me the element with the hover. You do that again, force state hover it is checked, so that should but it's not changing, so it must not be that one. Let's try the one above it, force state hover. One of these is causing that hover to exist. So I've got to right click, force state, hover. That did it. Okay, so you have to poke around a little bit, figure, okay, which one is controlling the hover? Here, it's very clear that's the one controlling the hover, the one that says caption. And you can see I've got some colors set in there right now. I could change that to any color I wanted to to see how it looks. And once I've isolated that, I can then grab this because that's what I'm interested in is actually what I'm interested in specifically is that right there because that's what's controlling the hover. Now, when I come over to my uh, HTML page in code, I do a search and you can see that's where I actually set that value. So you do that one at a time until you've got the look and feel that you uh, have in mind. Let's go through some of these other ones. The manifest page. Uh, the name here that I've made server matter dash guac, that has to be the name that I use for the extension itself. You can put whatever you want there, 
but you've got to make sure that your job file is named identically. The rest of that you may have your way with in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't matter. Uh, translations. Uh, right, there are probably many things that under app that you can do that will be reflected elsewhere. Um, for now, I'm just concerned about the login page. I wanted to say desktop matter. You may want it to say your brand as opposed to uh, Apache Guacamole. And that desktop matter, if you don't remember, if I log out, it happens right there. That's where that gets put. Let's talk about the guacmanifest.json file. Um, this is important. You're going to put in the version of guacamole that you're using. That needs to be there. And then the name, anything you want. The name space, you want to make that simple. There's no relationship to the jar file. Um, but if I look at a uh, chat GPT, it tells us that uh, namespaces and jar files create uh, help in organizing, structuring, and managing the components within the jar file, preventing naming conflicts and promoting code modularity and encapsulation. Well, I'm not using that namespace anywhere, but I have read elsewhere that it's best to keep to keep a namespace and to keep it simple. So I would certainly avoid spaces and special characters and just go with that. Beyond that, maybe somebody in the audience can weigh in and, and tell me what importance that has. As I said before, you can rename SM Custom CSS, the file call, whatever you want. You just have to make sure you uh, mirror that over here. Uh, this is the bash script that we talked about that would make uh, all this happen very quickly. Because if you come in here, you make a change in CSS, and then you run that, boom, it's changed it, it's restarted the server, and it's ready to look at right away. And that's it. That's how you can change the theme of your Apache Guacamole instance. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with it. These backgrounds, you can use gradients or a picture of something in the background to spice it up a little bit more. But it certainly makes it look a lot more professional and solid than the default installation. Interestingly enough, the colors that I chose, which are similar to our company colors, are quite similar to the colors that Apache has chosen themselves as a background for the guacamole project. I guess I shouldn't be surprised it is green after all. Uh, but thank you for, the, for watching. I hope that helps you. Um, please uh, like or subscribe, uh, or both, if you are so inclined. Bye-bye.